Good evening, everyone. Time for another update. Let me start off by saying I don't know how long they're going to leave YouTube up. So uh, I do have platforms already set up on Library Network and on BitTube. Uh, I have a couple of BitChute uh, and I have other accounts on other alternative media platforms, but I like decentralized ones and the two that I am invested in cryptocurrency wise are BitTube and Library. Um, I'll be posting updates on how to do, how to connect to those. If in the meantime we get disconnected because comms go down and there's, there's a very good chance that comms are going to go down. Uh, you can send me an email at brotherjohnf at yahoo.com and I may uh, create some kind of subscriber list so that I can get updates out in case comms go down. So what's happening? Well, I'm going to explain to you what's happening and what you can do and should do probably about it. But uh, before I do that, I want to give you some advice uh, and this is going to be if you're not interested in the market analysis that I'm going to be doing later. Uh, I'll try to keep it to maybe 20 minutes. Uh, but the first part is going to be for Christians mainly. So uh, if you're not interested in the religious stuff, then um, you probably want to skip ahead to roughly the 20 minute mark or uh, after I process, I'll go ahead and, and put a, a note as to where that is. So let's start with the religious information. Um, I don't believe in religion, of course, but um, Christianity specifically. So where are we at? Well, first of all, we're not in the Great Tribulation. But we are in what I would call something like a pre-echo of it. Uh, it. It's going to go down something like this. There's going to be a great economic catastrophe, world war, something like that. And there's going to be a leader who will emerge, who will save the day and put down all the evil and have a tremendous economic revival and the Bible says when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction shall come upon them and none of them shall escape. Now are we in that time period? I do not believe we're in that time period. I believe uh, prophetically that the tribulation cannot start until the rapture of the church occurs and that means that the period of grace which we're in uh, that period ends and we go into a period of time where God is dealing specifically with the nation of Israel again because that period has been put on hold for this age of grace. I'll go into um, further information on that but uh, it's it's way too deep of a topic to go into here. But as uh, getting away from prophecy I, I just want to talk about some practical scriptures here. Um, now, I'm, I'm not going to argue about these issues. If you disagree, that's fine, but this is my belief. Now, I, I know a lot of propaganda has been done about pastors who are on the payroll of the government, and that may be true, probably is true. Um, I don't trust churches uh, because of my dispensational beliefs uh, and very um, specific certain dispensational beliefs I don't have time to go into here. I think that most of what is called the church structure is actually just disobedience. So, but uh, the answer, of course, is in the King James Bible. Now, we're coming into a time period where you're going to have to live, uh, actually the way I've been living probably for the last five years at least, which is not tuning into any media concentrating on health, eating properly, working out, exercising, getting in shape, being as healthy as possible, reading and listening to the Bible, and uh, 
being around friends and family. That's really all I've been doing uh, anyway, so this kind of isn't a change for me. For a lot of people, it's going to be a change. But I think the first, uh, first most important verse that we need to talk about here is Romans 13. There are a lot of pastors who have uh, talked about this, and uh, there are a lot of people who have talked against this. But I think this verse is pretty clear. I'm going to read it to you. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then be afraid of the power? I'm sorry. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Now I think that speaks for itself. We can go into endless debates about who the legitimate power is. Pretty soon, I think you're going to... It won't be very difficult to find out. You can just simply walk out onto your street and uh, talk to the soldier standing there who's trying to maintain order. So this verse will become pretty clear. Uh, let's go to the next verse. And this is what I was talking about, about how I've been living. Uh, a lot of people are going to hopefully start living this way voluntarily, but they're probably going to live this way uh, against their will. And this is 1 Timothy 6. And let me just point out that this, if I told you that I could read something to you from the richest person to exist in the universe ever, for eternity, for the history of the universe, You'd probably think, well, I'd probably better listen to what that person has to say. Well, I'm reading to you from the person who's going to be the richest person forever in the universe, except for, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the Apostle Paul. And uh, he gave up everything to become the, the apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, and he is the apostle of the age that you're in, the age of grace. Again, this is way too deep to go into, but... This is what he said. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So, I'm here to tell you from personal experience, happiness and contentment in life does not come from money. And in the world we've been living in, I have found that there's nothing here that money can buy that I want. I certainly don't want their godless media. I certainly don't want their godless entertainment, their godless video games, their godless conversations, their godless revelings, etc. There's nothing that money can buy here that I get anything out of. But I do get a lot out of eating right, exercising, going to the gym. It's probably going to be the biggest thing I'm going to miss during these times during the lockdown is being able to go to the gym, uh, reading the Bible, listening to the Bible. If you don't have a King James Bible, get one. 
if you don't have Alexander Scourby's reading through the King James Bible, get it. You can put it on your phone. You can listen to it. You can fall asleep to it. Trust me, that's what you need. So let's go to the next verse. This is from Revelation. Again, I don't think this is in effect. This will be in effect at some point. And the tribulation period is going to be marked by martyrdom. They're going to be killing people. And there isn't going to be people like myself or others preaching. In fact, most of the people who preach will be martyred. So at this point in time in the future, there's actually going to be an angel flying through heaven preaching the gospel. And by the way, it's not the gospel that we hear today, which is the gospel of grace, which I'll give you uh, at the end of this uh, Bible section. But this is the future when uh, the earth is its hell on earth. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth and see the sea and springs of water. By the way, these are the things that are judged. He takes them away. The earth, the sea, and the springs of water because people aren't grateful for what God does. And another angel followed saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. We could go endlessly in to the Q stuff, the adrenochrome, and all that stuff. Is this the fulfillment of this? No, it's not. But it's going to be like this. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out, full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Yes, that's coming. Are we there now? I don't believe so. Is it possible that we're in the beginning of this period? It's possible. It is. So what's coming? Well, Jesus warned us of what's coming. He warned specifically his disciples, apostles, that there was a time coming. And he says here in Luke 21, verse 34, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Now, he also mentioned this time period coming in Revelation 3 in his message to the Church of Philadelphia through the Apostle John. And he's talking to the faithful church of Philadelphia. He says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also, also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth." So there's a trial coming, and it's God's will that this trial come. A lot of people say, well, how can, be, how can God be both righteous 
and all powerful and all merciful. Well, he is. And one of the things that God does is he wraps up time periods. Uh, that happened with Noah before the flood. It happened with Lot before Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to happen again. Uh, the rapture will be the evacuation. But uh, there, there's going to be a trial. And you're going to have to choose between being beheaded or taking this mark and going to hell. You're literally going to choose heaven or hell. And that's how things are going to be wrapped up. Uh, is, is it unfair of God to do this? Well, no, actually, he's perfectly just. Uh, the time comes when the nations are ripe for judgment. And that has to do with every choice that everyone makes. So we're all responsible for that. So now how much is this similar to this period? Well, like I said, I think it's kind of a pre-echo going on here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the virus. I think you already know where I stand on that. But I will say that whatever you do, do not let them stick you. Because whatever things they want to come to pass, they'll probably use that to make it to come to pass. So they might not have the numbers now, but they will have the numbers. So I encourage you to trust God for your health and for your wealth and for your safety. And don't succumb to fear. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Uh, I am not going to take any vaccines or tattoos or anything like that. And I suggest, strongly suggest that you do so as well. Do not do so as well. Uh, so I told you before I get to the market stuff, I wanted to give you the gospel of grace that we have in this time period that the Apostle Paul, the mystery that the Apostle Paul uh, revealed to the world. And that's that Jesus Christ died for every one of us. Uh, that was not revealed uh, when Jesus came to Israel, but it was revealed to the Apostle Paul after uh, Jesus appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus and gave him the gospel of grace to preach to the Gentiles as God was setting Israel aside for a time. And this message is pretty simple for us in our age. The message is really easy to understand is that God is a man. His name is Jesus Christ he became a man. He was born of a virgin. He's eternal. He created everything. Everything is held together by the word of his power. He became a man. He lived a perfect life that none of us can live. He died on a cross, and because he had no sin, he rose from the dead, and he was seen by many witnesses. And this book uh, the words in this book are the proof. It's internally consistent, and there is no explanation except that God wrote it. If you believe that truth that God said of his son, that he died for your sins and he rose from the dead for your justification, you're saved. You're sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. You can never be lost. Your salvation is eternally secure, and you can trust him. So get a King James Bible, believe what it says. If you do, you'll understand what it says. Ask God and he'll show you. Fortunately, the King James Bible cannot be suppressed. It's not like the book of Eli. They can't burn them all because we're electronic. Can they shut comms down? Yeah. Will they do it? I don't know. Can they burn every Bible, I suppose? But uh, right now the Bible is out there. There's really no suppressing it. It would have to get much, much worse. At some point it will during the tribulation. That's why that angel's flying and preaching. But I don't foresee that time anytime soon. So now let's get into the economics of things. Uh, what's happening? Well, I've been sleepless for a very long time trying to ponder what's coming down. Well, what's coming down is what we warned you about for the last 10 years. And that is endgame of this economic system. Now, there's a virus story. I think that this virus story will probably just fade 
into the memory hole probably more slowly than other things fade in the memory hole but it will it will fade into the memory hole and the reality of the second great depression that we are now in will come forth <clears throat> and what is uh, what is that going to be well let me play you a video that I did uh, a long time ago on my channel explaining the petrodollar and how that works. This is a conversation between Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. And Abraham Lincoln is explaining to George Washington what the petrodollar is, why they created it, how it's going to collapse, and what happens when it collapses. So let's listen to this, and then I will go into further detail about what's going to happen. Did you hear about the petrodollar? No. What is the petrodollar? Petro means oil, and dollar means money. So the petrodollar is oil-based money. How can money be oil-based? How long have you got? A long time. Why? Because this is going to take a while. Do you remember when America was founded? Yes. I was there. So you remember that the Constitution required that all money be gold and silver based? Yes. We did that so that no monopoly could ever be formed around the control of money. So you didn't want there to be a central bank? No. We knew that if wicked banksters ever instituted a central bank, then our people would be enslaved. So we gave that power to the states, providing that only gold and silver were to be coined as money. Well, I'm sorry to inform you, but the wicked banksters won, and the Congress created a central bank in 1913, called the Federal Reserve. Wait a minute, while I roll over in my grave. And not only did they do that, but they outlawed the ownership of gold by the American people in 1933. That is treason. Yes, and even worse, they took away the silver coins in 1964. Okay, now you are making me mad. Yes, and finally, in 1971, they took away the gold backing of the dollar for trade with other nations, when those nations demanded to exchange their gold for dollars. Well, that doesn't surprise me. If the Congress is willing to take away their own people's money by outlawing gold ownership, and taking away the silver coins, I wouldn't trust them with my money either. Exactly. So after 1971, American leaders had a problem. They had to trade with other nations, but they were running out of gold. So that's when they decided to create an empire. Based on the petrodollar. Empire. We never intended for our nation to become an empire. No, we didn't. We just wanted to be free, and to peacefully trade with other nations, but instead they built an empire. But what about it makes you call it an empire? Well, how many nations are there in the world today? According to Wikipedia, there are 193 internationally recognized sovereign states. Correct. And America has military bases in 63 of those. And personnel in 156 of them. Then you are correct. America now has become a world empire. Yes, and empires are very expensive to maintain, aren't they? Yes. That is why we only provided in the Constitution for defensive wars. Because we never wanted America to become an empire like the British Empire we fled from. But unfortunately, they didn't listen to you, so they built a world empire. But empires are very expensive. So how can you pay for a world empire? Tribute. All historical empires have exacted tribute from the peoples they conquered. Yes. But tribute is also very hard to extract, because it takes huge armies of tax collectors. And it is frequently the cause of uprisings and revolutions. So they came up with a better way to pay for the empire. What is that? They decided to force the entire world to use their fiat paper currency. And since they controlled the currency, they could just print more of it when they needed to. And exact more tribute by a process of currency debasement. But if other nations see that the currency they are being forced to use is being debased, won't they just use a different currency? Yes. But what if there is an important commodity that they must have to operate their economies? And that commodity can only be purchased with the American dollar? What commodity is that? Oil, and all oil-based products. 
These can only be bought with American paper dollars. But how did they force all the nations to only use dollars to buy oil? Well, the first thing they did was form OPEC, which a consortium of all the major oil producing nations. And they made them all agree to only sell their oil in dollars. Why would they agree to that? Because other than having oil, most of these nations were just big piles of sand. So those nations thought that they could become filthy rich by agreeing to this agreement. I see. And they also agreed to let America put military bases there to protect all of the oil wells. So what you are telling me is that America is able to force all other nations to use their dollar to buy oil. Because they control the oil with treaties and military bases? Yes. And they are able to exact tribute to pay for that empire by forcing all other nations to use their worthless paper currency, if they want to buy any oil? Yes. Doesn't this arrangement cause the nations of the world to be upset? that they are forced to pay for the costs of running the American empire. Yes, it is but no nation really wants to be made an example of by being the first to abandon this system. Ask Saddam Hussein. But what if all the nations of the world decide at once to abandon the petrodollar system? That is what you are hearing rumblings of today. If this system collapses, America will no longer be able to pay for her expensive military and will have to shrink her empire. But won't that make the world unstable? Yes, in fact, these types of geopolitical changes usually result in wars and even world war. I see. Thank goodness we won't be around to see it because I don't think it's going to be pretty. Thank you for explaining the petrodollar. You're welcome, goodbye. Unstable? Yes, in fact, these types of geopolitical changes usually result in wars and even world war. I see. Thank goodness we won't be around to see it because I don't think it's going to be pretty. That's where we are. Right now. So what's going on? Well, the petrodollar system has collapsed. The petrodollar system was the basis for our trade with China. The importation of Chinese goods has stopped. What does that mean? It means that the music was playing. We were playing musical chairs. Everybody was walking around waiting for a seat. And when the music stops, when the world system stops, when trade stops, when there's a trade war, because that's what we're in, a trade war. When the trade war happens, then the music stops. And just like on an individual basis where everybody's locked in their homes and has what they have and just has to hunker down and make it through, it's the same thing with nations. When trade stops, everybody has what they have and they have to make do with that. Now, what is the impact going to be? Well, the impact is going to be unbelievable because everything was made in China. As I say, was because there isn't going to be any more of it. So everything that is is going to be priced in whatever emerges as the currency of trade, whether that be a new dollar that's issued, whether that be a crypto dollar that's issued, whether that be alternative currencies that are traded perhaps under the table or by barter or gold and silver or representations. We have no idea what's going to emerge as the currency that people use. But whatever the currency that emerges that people use, the things that exist are going to skyrocket in price in that currency. What does that mean? It means what we've been saying for 10 years. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. So your assets are going to be the things that you hold cryptocurrencies and wallets, physical gold and silver. Those things are going to skyrocket in value. So I want to show you a chart of the, I'm going to have to refresh this, but uh, we want to take a look 
at Bitcoin because that's a very good one to use. And we want to cross that over with the Dow. Now, the reason why is because I think Bitcoin is going to be the canary in the coal mine. Uh, definitely, probably gold and silver as well. The problem with gold and silver is you don't have a real market. Uh, do you have a real market in cryptocurrencies? Well, uh, you do right now. You, you, you at least have running markets that run 24-7. You can do technical analysis. You can trade. They've Ever since cryptocurrencies emerged, which were the death knell for the fiat system. They had to do something to collapse the system or another system would have replaced it. A, an independent decentralized system. Um, so they knew their, their day was coming and th this end game that we're looking at apparently is uh, their response, quite the response. So expect them to, probably to issue some type of cryptocurrency. It, a lot of people are speculating it might be Ripple. I don't know. I have a little bit of Ripple. I don't. It's not going to be Bitcoin because it's going to have to be something they can control. But the price of stuff. Uh, what is stuff? Clothes, food, cars, electronics, Bitcoin, gold, silver. The price of these things is going to skyrocket because of limited supply and. Uh, high demand. So we're probably going to see that start. So let's put a cross. Uh, let's actually go to the Dow chart and then we'll put a comparison of Bitcoin. So we'll use Coinbase, uh, BTC, US dollar, that will work fine. So this top line here, obviously that's Bitcoin relative to the Dow in, you know, in absolute terms, of course, it's, there's no comparison. But if we zoom in, what I'm expecting to see, you can see right here emerging. They're going to cross and they're going to keep going. Bitcoin is going to go up. And the Dow is going to go down. Same thing with gold. Same thing with prices. Uh, so a lot of people for many, many years, myself and many others, have speculated. Do you remember Bob Chapman? Do you remember back in the days, back in 2003, when silver was $3 an ounce? Do you remember when gold was $250 an ounce? Uh, we had Bob Chapman and Jim Willie and Zero Hedge emerging later on. I mean, this has been people have been talking about this for the last 20 years. Uh, what what are we going to have? Are we going to have a deflationary crash? Are we going to have hyperinflation? Well, I think we're going to have a little bit of both. We're going to have deflation in financial assets. That's already started. And when the reality sets in, it's going to set in. Uh, as I said before, as this virus thing begins to fade into the background and the new reality of this trade war begins to move into people's consciousness of, you know, the situation we're really in, that trade is stopped, then uh, the bidding for things is going to happen. Uh, there's never been a government in the history of the world that has been able to suppress markets. Uh, in cases where governments have tried, black markets have emerged. Uh, the worst governments in the world, whether that be the communism of the Soviet Union or the communism of China, markets flourished under those economies. They were just uh, black markets. So anytime the soldiers need anything that's, you know, valuable, uh, then that's where they're going to go. Look at the prison system. Uh, free market, black market. Uh, we all know this. So that's what's going to happen. Uh, the black markets are going to increase. 
the price of goods and services are going to rise. The value of money, whatever that is, is going to go down. Now, we're in the very, very, very early stages of this. So the, the realization that this is happening is probably going to be recognized by only maybe 0.01% of the people. The vast, vast majority of people are going to be under such a state of cognitive dissonance, they will not be able to accept this new reality. Um, it, it will slowly dawn on a small minority of people what's actually happening. But it is a new reality. Things have changed. They're not going back. So you need to just deal with that and recognize what's happened. This is the collapse of the petrodollar system. This is a trade war. Uh, you can put the virus story in however you want to do it. China created a bioweapon and it torched the whole world economy. Uh, China wants to say the U.S. created a bioweapon and released it in China. Um, there is no weapon. It's just a virus. And it's a very, very bad strain and it's killing people. Um, there is no virus at all, but just a common cold. And they're using this as an excuse. Spin whatever you want to try to explain it. It doesn't really matter to me. The virus is going to fade into the background and the trade war is going to come into uh, everybody's consciousness. This lockdown will be lifted. It's in no one's interest, regardless of what faction they are, to lock everybody in their house, you know, forever. Obviously, there's an end to that, uh, whether that's going to be, you know, food rations handed out in the cities. Uh, if they don't, cities will burn. We know this. We've been talking about this for 10 and 20 years. Uh, what's going to happen when this happens? It's happened. You need to wrap your mind around that. Uh, the, the music has stopped. Everybody is sitting in their chair and they have what they have. Now we have to move forward. Um, Trade is not going to resume in any way that we've known it. There are the containers coming into the ports, that's not going to resume. The cars that we have here are the cars that we have. Think about Cuba. They were still driving cars from the 1950s, something like that. We cannot retool that fast. We cannot do it. It's not possible. Um, so it's going to take some time. Uh, I kind of woke up to these issues when I watched the video from Cliff High and uh, he was talking about these new realities. Uh, yes, he's right. We're going to have to completely retool and that does not happen overnight. It doesn't. Uh, even in World War II where we saw the mobilization of the largest uh, army and weapons and everything, that took years for that uh, type of retooling to occur. Uh, so, as Cliff has said, we're in a war. We're actually in a trade war. I hope and pray that we don't go into a shooting war. Uh, that would be very, very bad. Uh, so we hope that doesn't happen. But we are in a trade war, and these things are going to occur. Uh, these economic changes as far as prices are going to happen. I project the stock market is going to decline in real terms, roughly 90-95%. Uh, the decline in nominal terms, I don't know. Uh, it depends on what they do with the currency. Right now, this relief effort is stalled out. They're playing politics with it. Can there really be any relief from this? Yeah, there can. They could. They could just, you know unfreeze everything and stop locking people in their homes and, and let things go, but they've got this virus scenario that they're uh, telling people about. So the real economy, things are not going to begin to appear to be what they're going to be until this virus thing goes away. But we're not going back. We're not going back to the old system. This is a new reality. 
You have to get used to it. Get yourself a King James Bible. Get yourself an audio copy of it. Get yourself good food and just uh, be thankful that you have what you have and the knowledge of the truth of what's going on and keep learning, keep studying. Again, uh, I don't know how long comms are going to stay up. So if you want to reach me, send me an email at brotherjohnf at yahoo.com. I'll get to work on setting up on library.tv and BitTube and uh, get that information out so that if these comms go down, other comms can stay up. Um, God bless you. Stay safe. And we'll talk to you next time.